South Carolina now has become the latest state to restrict abortion access. The number of major policy changes we've seen come from the state and local level over just the past couple of months. David Pepper, former Ohio Democratic Party chair and author of the new book, Saving Democracy, a user's manual for every American, argues the fight for change needs to focus on the state level. And David joins us now. David, it's good to see you this morning. So this is your second book, sort of your yeah. second warning. You, yeah. you had one that was um, Laboratories for Autocracy in mm -hmm. 2021 that sort of raised the red flag about right. what was happening, not in national politics, but what you saw on the ground. And we were just talking, it does seem since then, perhaps, though I know you would argue we're, Democrats are not all the way there, they have woken up to the fact that you have to earn this, you have to fight for yeah. it, that this democracy thing is not inevitable. Yeah, I mean, it. it um, I wrote the first book to be a wake-up call that the front line of the attack on democracy are the states. That's where it's happening. We like to focus on all the big DOJ cases, and we should in D.C., but where they are making sort of nonstop progress, and you mentioned with South Carolina, Ohio, Tennessee, Florida, they, they take over these state houses, gerrymander the hell out of them, suppress the other side, and that's where they can pass extremist laws that would never survive in Washington. They're too toxic. And so I do, you know, when I named the book Laboratories of Autocracy, I thought, this might sound a little much for people. Well, it's not. And I hear the term now more often, but I still worry, and this is why I wrote the second book, most Americans, while they see it maybe more clearly, we're still fighting the battle of old. And until we get to the front of the battle, which is in states and state houses, and build an infrastructure that supports running in all those places, we're still fighting a battle sort of assuming the democracy is intact when it's, in, when it's in fact in sort of jeopardy in all these states. I know if Joe were sitting here, he would absolutely love what you're saying because he always says Democrats have to learn how to fight the way Republicans yeah. have always fought. And that's the case you're making here, which is you've got a soccer analogy. Right. Stop just being the goalie deflecting shots away. Go on offense. Yeah, I mean, I say all the time, my sons are six and nine. They're playing soccer. They, I put in the book, my son Jack understands the team always on offense wins. And they're on offense in states and state houses. We're not even playing defense in many of these places. We have too many uncontested races. So they take shot after shot after shot. And when they score those shots, like Dobbs, the Dobbs case, the abortion bans, the other laws, we may, our main response is, well, we need more U.S. senators. I've, I want more U.S. senators, too. But we are not obstructing the shots where they're being taken in these state houses. We're not, we're not even contesting half of the extremists taking them. And until we do that, until we bring accountability into these state houses, they won't stop doing what they're doing. In fact, they have every incentive to be more extreme until we get in there and make the counter arguments. David, I really agree. And I think it's such an important message to go back locally and not to focus on what people in cable news green rooms are talking about, you know, those ideas in politics. I question, though, what about the money? How do you get people, donors interested in those races that are right. less sexy, frankly, because it's fun to donate to a Senate right. race and you think that, oh, you're going to do something. But really, it's the long term work of organizing and the money that, frankly, yeah. in a state like Ohio or Mississippi, where I'm from, and it's just not as much glamour associated right. to it. What's interesting is in recent years, we've shown that when people understand that democracy at stake, grassroots donors show up. Wisconsin Supreme Court race. No one would have ever thought that that would all of a sudden lead to millions of dollars. But we had a grown up conversation that democracy was in stake in that race. And all of a sudden people respond and there's money there. And that happened in the Secretary of State races last November, where not a single election denier won in a swing state. What we haven't had, though, for years, and this is why I write these books, is a, a grown up conversation to all the donors and all the grassroots activists that frankly provide most of the money, saving democracy is not only about a few U.S. Senate races. And they, of course, they get $100 million, whether it's running against Mitch McConnell or Florida or wherever. We need to say to folks, of course we want to win those races, but take 20% of the money that is going to these high profile celebrity races, put them into uncontested or swing state house races. And you're not funding just an extra add on to a TV buy. You're funding entire campaigns of dozens of candidates. So the, the, the dollars are there. This is not a zero sum game. 
we have to have a better, more savvy conversation, frankly, like the Koch brothers have had for a generation, that going on offense in these states where democracy is under attack and can be lifted. You just had that thing in Michigan. Yeah. When you win, you can do good things. When you don't win, we see what they do. So get, get to bat for democracy on offense in these states, and all of a sudden, you can get great results. David, Jen Saki's here with a question for you. Jen? Hi, David. Uh, I agree with you completely on state legislatures, and that's where a lot of the action is happening on not, gun violence, sorry, et cetera. Not, oh, he doesn't oh. He, Jen, I'll translate oh, your question. Yeah, Go ahead. Okay, great. Thank you, thank you, Willie. I wanted to ask him about Ohio, uh, and I know we've been talking about state legislature races. Totally agree. But I wanted to ask him, I hear from a lot of people who say, um, you know, Tim Ryan ran a great race. Sherrod Brown is up. This is going to be a race that Democrats have to win. What is the best case so that people stop freaking out about this as to why Sherrod Brown has a good shot of keeping his seat there? Uh, great question. So Mike DeWine got reelected by 26 points. J.D. Vance got elected by six points. That's a huge difference. And the Republican Party is choosing the Vance lane. Uh, and that gives Cher Brown, I think, a great chance. It, uh, there, there is still a Republican sort of more moderate tendency in Ohio that shows you the difference between those two races. Tim Ryan overperformed by 20 points, to put it differently. So I think if, uh, Cher is a great candidate. He's got all the make, he's got all the strengths of, of Tim Ryan, but he's much better known. And if you look on the Republican side, it looks like they're gearing up to run a Trump MAGA candidate. Uh, all the, you know, the, 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 the J.D. Vance endorsed the other day. I think Trump's going to probably endorse this one guy. Uh, and I think that gives Sherrod a very good chance. I mean, he's, he's overperformed in the past. Tim Ryan's brand of politics dramatically overperformed. There's got to be a lot of work done to improve turnout on our cities. The turnout on our cities in 22 were not good. You almost can't win with that level of turnout. But if people gear up, I think, I think Sherrod's got the, the shot that he's always had. He's very well well known and very respected Tim, and gets a lot of crossover votes. Tim Ryan was a great candidate too yeah. and, and ran a good race. So let's bring it down for people watching sure. down to sort of the local level. You say there's nothing too small for you to get involved with. Get involved with the school board, whatever it is to participate in this process and to kind of stand at the door of democracy. Sure. People ought to do it. Yeah, I mean, just keep in mind, almost everything the other side is pushing, and not everyone's going to like to hear this, but it's true, is deeply unpopular. When they're trying to ban books, that is a toxic view in most places. Yeah. So when they show up at that school board meeting wanting to ban books, those school board members, if you're not already running yourself, should know that they represent, when they want to ban books, probably a third of the community. So you show up to that meeting also. Get a big crowd and say, we don't want the angry parent down the street banning books from our library. We want to have a choice in our education. Our kids do too. By showing up, you are literally speaking for two-thirds of that community. We're seeing these toxic school board candidates lose all over the country, including conservative areas. So whether it's running yourself for a school board, if, if you've been yeah. stuck in an uncontested state house seat, and this is a crisis all over the country, some states like the Tennessee Republican legislature, half of those Republicans didn't face an opponent last November. Of course they're going to act like extremists. They have every incentive to kick out the two Justins and no incentive to keep them. That's how they'd lose their next primary, right? So if you're in a district that has an opponent, run or find your most impressive friend and ask them to run. Whatever you do, get there someone running. Go. School board, and, and by the way, there's so many ways I go through in the book. Every nonprofit in this country, in any city, could be engaging voters. Get them, get, let them see how they can get a voter ID. Register them if they've been purged. We know that cities are being targeted by these state voter suppression efforts. If you're the mayor of a city, get in your entire city hall footprint dedicated to engaging these voters who are being left out of the process intentionally. So, you know, take on the censorship, sign up to be an elections official. Steve Bannon's recruiting all the time. He wants election deniers mm -hmm. as election officials. Let's get some pro-democracy ch champions as election officials. So my, my broader point here is that the federal mindset and the coverage of everything leaves most viewers thinking, there's nothing I can do mm -hmm. except watch in frustration. Mm -hmm. And the part of this, the, the core, core of this book is the battle for democracy, the front line is where you live, which is sobering, but also hopefully inspiring. There's so much more you can do than you've ever been told. And that's what the book tries to walk through.